So thank you for thank you for singing this prayer with us. And now we're going to um, do our prayers. A couple of guests are arriving, so I'm going to let them get seated. Hi. Good, morning. Good morning. So um, a couple of friends are joining us, and we'll go ahead and get started with praise to Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed. To you I make reference and so sorry friends, my eyesight is poor. Thank you for carrying me in that prayer. Now, when you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate, completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate, endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion. Omniscient teacher, field of ocean-like merits and good qualities. To the best gone, I prostrate. Free from attachment. Your virtue releases from the evil gone realms. Unique, supreme, ultimate meaning. To the dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma Refuge, homage to the Great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non virtuous actions, accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds. Look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby, assume, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in time enlightened, in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, May I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distant. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. 
I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginning this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicittas ripen. And may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jewel mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. O oh, my masters, my dams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith. Accepting these out of your boundless compassion, please send forth waves of your blessings. Adam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Nuryati Yam. The heart of the perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time. The Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures, Natan and Rajagriya, together with the great community of monks and the great community of Bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara said to the Venerable Shari Putra, Shari Putra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form, form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomenon. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including, no mind element, and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to and including, no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there's no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There's no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond air, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared. So we'll say it one time and then to ourselves 20 times. Tayata gate gate par gate par sam gate bodhisam.
Paita gate gate par gate par sam gate bodhisoha. Chariputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avalokiteshvara saying, well said, well said, son of the lineage, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated, even the Tathagatas rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Shaivari Putra, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Arya, Avalokiteshvara, those surrounding in their entirety along with the world of gods, humans, Asuras, and Gandharvas were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. Oh, thank you all for coming. Thank you everyone here for coming. So um, this morning I've had a lot of change. <laughs> and um, for someone that likes security as much as I do, that was kind of a rigorous moment or moments <laughs> and continues to be to this moment. So what's happened is this, today we have scheduled a volunteer meeting and the volunteer meeting is regarding um, uh, our upcoming event or events, because it's over a few days, December 2nd to December 5th with a, a guest, um, Jado Rinpoche. Jado to Toku Rinpoche, such a precious person who's coming here and he's our heart lineage teacher for those of you who might be new. And he's going to, um, one of the things that he's going to do that we're so grateful for is he's going to give a Kala Chakra um, initiation. And for that reason, you're hosting this meeting so that all of us together can uh, create uh, an environment for not only uh, for, for our community, but beyond our community, the international community, and to show our heart lineage teacher and our, our teacher, Lama Jinpa, how grateful we are that they're going to do this here in Sacramento at Done Darve Temple. So uh, Lama Jinpa, but the change that's occurred is that the weather is so blustery. Many very important people to me and to Lama Jimpa um, aren't able to be here because it's not safe for some people to drive. They come from Elk Grove, for example, or even just across town. The branches are down, Why, maybe some wires in some places. It's really incredible weather, which I like a lot, except for today. <laughs> and, so, and today I'm like, oh no, there are, my friends won't be able to make it. It won't be safe. And so Lama Jinpa made the decision that we should hold the volunteer meeting next week. But then, so I'm like, okay. Uh, so I let some I started to let people know. I started to go down the list. As, and then, then he texted Connor and said, Patty should give a talk on Bodhicitta, which I did last week. And so, um, uh, so, so uh, that was like, oh my goodness, I don't have the notes. <laughs> but um, I do, I, I have things to share. And I thought even though today we're not gonna have the volunteer meeting about our upcoming event, I could share a little bit about that. And then when Lama's here, I mean, that's the best, isn't it? Isn't it better if he's here for our volunteer meeting? Because it's gonna be uh, really important that we are all in it together and have a lot of harmony. And he has that capacity to bring us together that way. But since he's not here, and since I didn't realize it was gonna be next week, we printed out this 3D image of a Kala Chakra Palace, which I'm not sure, Connor, if they can see that online. Is that possible? Or um, if not, that's okay. I can still refer them to a site um, on Cornell University. If you just type in Kala Chakra Cornell University, you'll see a three-dimensional image of the Kala Chakra Palace. And in this uh, site, which some of you are, I'm sure are aware of, if you it's like a, you can click on any of the parts of the palace and it moves like, kind of like a little movie. And it talk, and it tells you what it represents, not only outwardly, but inwardly in your, in your own bodies. Because, because Kala Chakra is, uh, I'm uh, not a very strong practitioner of Kala Chakra, but it represents our inner body as well as our outer world. And we're, when we have our meeting next Sunday, Lama's going to help us create a Kala Chakra mandala here at Doné Dargé. Um, and so the volunteer meeting isn't just about ordinary activity. It's about more than that. In fact, I'm going to share just a couple words he gave to me before I got this change of plan, because I thought it was so beautiful. And it might help you 
realize that your volunteer efforts are really important and also uh, that we need you. So he said, Lama Jimpa said this, he says we need for our upcoming event, it's not like a convention, it's really, really so special. And so we need to consider the view, he says. In other words, why are we doing all this, he says. It's to awaken and manifest the Kala Chakra Mandala, a community of peace and freedom based on the bliss-filled wisdom of interdependence, inter, inter which is uh, another way of saying emptiness. So Sangha people need to keep this in mind and be the change they want to be in the world, knowing that there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. So that means we bring our own peace to the situation, which means things are going to go wrong. And but in that wrongness, we can find something, something about what we can bring to that situation. Like instead of thinking outwardly about what's wrong, we can think, what can I bring to make this right? That's how I took it. Those are my words. And then so um, how we and he wants us to consider how to organize to present the, the Kala Chakra is the Kala Chakra. So that uh, those words inspired this printout of the Kala Chakra Palace. If you were in our temple right now, you would see inside a huge Kala Chakra mandala that looks like a two dimensional circle, but it's in reality a palace that's, uh, if you can't see the one that's beside me, which maybe I can, maybe, well, I'm not gonna try to do that because I think that might not, not work out, but if I encourage you to go to the uh, one place I liked so much was this Cornell Kala Chakra site because I, I uh, thought the visual was going to help me see it a lot easier when I do my practice. So, um, so anyway, so like I was mentioning, in our temple we have a huge Kala Chakra mandala, and then if you were outside, um, I'm not sure how many months ago, but uh, we have a Kala Chakra mural, and this mural is so amazing. You'll see in the center a uh, Kala Chakra uh, mandala that was sent. Uh, sent to us, the image was sent to us by Nam Gyal Monastery, which is so amazing that, uh, that they would help us in this capacity. And we took this image and enlarged it. And then surrounding it, you'll see the Himalayan mountains. And if you are just kind of on a rainy day wondering how to cheer yourself up, you could come by here and drive in our alley and you would see this Kala Chakra uh, mural. And there's also uh, the Potala Palace. So this was uh, made by a friend of ours who's an artist and also, well, actually a couple of friends because below, you'll, on the top, you'll see uh, the Kala Chakra Mandala surrounded by the Himalayas and um, the Patala Palace. And um, I, I'm not giving it justice. And then below, you'll see uh, another mural made by a good friend named Lindsay Parkinson and um, Sandra Warner. Those these two artists, along with some of our help, some people here, little children, you see handprints. And you'll see like, a, um, well, I, I feel like I'm not doing justice. I want to instead leave a little mystery. You can come and see it for yourself. So, um, so those of you who are coming expecting a volunteer meeting, I'm so glad you're here because I want you to kind of consider Lama's words about that we're creating a sacred space. And we need you not... Not, we need not just a few people, we need every one of us because many hands make light work. And um, also it's kind of fun to come together. Some people, for example, have been coming together on uh, Saturdays and Sundays and rolling mantras, for example. And other people are painting our fence uh, a forest green. So it's gonna look so beautiful. So this, in these kind of ways we're preparing for this, this time. And other people are cleaning the cottage and so, um, so just from those few things, you can see there's lots to be done and, and, and your skills and help will be so appreciated. Okay, so now for my talk. He told me about a half hour ago to talk about bodhicitta. I've never given a talk without reading. And <laughs> so I will do my very best, but um, uh, it won't be as clean cut as my reading, which I don't know if that's clean cut either since I wrote it, but comparatively, um, it's a lot harder for me. That's why I always read. But anyway, um, last week, if you weren't here, I mentioned about ultimate bodhicitta and relative bodhicitta. So um, when, we're talking, when we're talking about bodhicitta, 
in a relative way, we're kind of talking about that one, the I, that shows up to be of service. Um, when we speak of a relative bodhicitta, that wish to relieve the suffering of others, that wish to serve others. And like I mentioned last week, some people do this as an accountant. You know, I mean, sometimes we just think of the social workers and nurses, or I'm a speech therapist, um, but really like we have attorneys and accountants and, and cleaners and, and we have, uh, you know, those kind of waitresses and people, my, my favorite um, bodhisattva is the person that waits on me at Starbucks mm -hmm. because, <laughs> because honestly, I go there and they know my name, which is kind of revealing, I would imagine, but I go there and I know it's a corporate entity but when I go to Starbucks this this beautiful young woman um, doesn't realize how much she helps me because she's like hi Patty I know what you want so nice <laughs> and so um so I just mentioned her because uh, that's that relative I'm here to serve because I wanted to feel kind of special until I heard her say Bill what do you need today and I'm like oh she's just that way she shows up to be of service and help others so that that's just kind of a very beginning um, example of what bodhicitta is. You know, that's kind of like, because I'm a beginner, so I can't do much more than that. But then the other kind of bodhicitta that we talk about is the bodhicitta, uh, the ultimate bodhicitta. And so ultimate bodhicitta is when we show up, but we don't even need credit. We just, are, there's something that's kind of wanting to express itself through us. And this bodhicitta is the one where we can practice throughout the day. Like we can ask ourselves when we do whatever we do, who's doing this? We can ask ourselves this question and we can search and search. And that we, our whole, and then that way, our whole day will become a practice. Every moment will become a practice, especially when things are difficult. If we feel especially insulted by somebody, for example, I mean, just yesterday, I was walking at the river with my husband and my son and I took pictures of it to show what a peaceful journey it was but the truth is oh my husband said something and it was so simple did you turn the stove off <laughs> when when we left and you know what I didn't and so this I arose very strongly and I said maybe you guys should walk without me can you believe it what a big reaction and that's why we need each other because such a little thing to say. And the truth is I didn't turn the stove off. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's actually helping me. He's helping me, first of all, reminding me that I didn't do something important. And second of all, reminding me the truth is I need a lot of practice and I need to, I need to do a lot of uh, shamatha still. And I need to do a lot of what's called Vipassana, searching um, and analyzing what's going on, not just with myself, but by the phenomenal world that I encounter as I go about my day. So those are uh, how I understand bodhicitta at, at this moment. And then this morning I was with um, a group of people that, uh, because we do walking meditation in case you ever wanna join us. And, um, and I do this with Doug, he's my friend uh, here. And uh, we just started back up again because with COVID we stopped doing it. So um, uh, we started to do it inside when it's poor weather like today. But anyway, um, when we do this, we always say a prayer by a very um, credible bodhisattva. It's a realized uh, being that uh, really uh, is an embodiment of bodhicitta, relative and ultimate. And he has a book called The Bodhisattva Way of Life that is completely about what I'm talking about, but in a much richer way and in a way where you could just read this book. In fact, this book it contains the whole path in it. And um, so if you haven't heard of it or just wish to find a practice that, that would be beneficial, I would recommend that book. And um, in that, the reason I mentioned Doug and I is because whenever we go outside, um, Lama wants us to consider the world the way I just described. Sometimes he says words like, you are the eyes of the world. Well, that's the, that's the ultimate bodhicitta. And um, like I mentioned in my talk last week, 
when Lama talks about bodhicitta, he says we need to keep this person, this one that wishes to help. We, this one that wishes to help is needed, but it's simultaneous. This ultimate, when he talks about it, he talks about bodhicitta in terms of something that's like more like uh, uh, freedom. Freedom, he's able to be in any situation, no matter what's going on, no matter how difficult, how easy, whatever it is, and he's able to be fully present in this situation with a good heart, so, um, with love. Sometimes love doesn't look like we expect. Sometimes it can be kind of sharp, <laughs> but that's because that's the kind of love that's needed at that moment. Sometimes the love, love can be so soft, you have to listen closely. It's like a whisper. But he says, this, like, we are the eyes of the world. And this, what exists in me, this Buddha nature, exists in everybody. So um, I'm not used to uh, speaking in this format with an online kind of thing. So if I'm not looking right at the camera the way it did, I hope, <laughs> I don't know, I can't see myself because I need to wear my glasses. <laughs> but um, I was um, going to, you know, I was one thing I was looking at last week and I was like, why, when I give my talks, why, uh, I, I must not leave enough space for questions or comments, or maybe my talks are just too far out there. I don't know. So I thought maybe this time I will, uh, you know, try to wait a little bit just in case, no pressure, of course, somebody has something that they'd like to share. It doesn't have to even be anything connected to what I've said about bodhicitta, for example. But before, um, before I open that up, I, I thought, to share the prayer that uh, that Doug and I say with our group, and it's from that book, The Bodhisattva Way of Life by Shanti Deva. So many of you will be familiar with this prayer. I haven't prepared Connor um, before, but do we have enough of these for the people here? It's Connor. Is there any way to screen share share Shanti Deva's prayer? Or I'm sure, I have to go check. Okay, so Connor's going to check if he has it, and if not, it's uh, widely available online, but I didn't prepare Connor, so that's why he's not ready for that. So here in-house, we have a few copies because of our uh, practice in the morning, but um, this, is, this prayer is kind of talking a lot about uh, relative uh, bodhicitta. So uh, I will. I will uh, wait for Connor. To, I guess Connor. Should I? Should I wait a little longer, or do you want us to just go ahead? Just go ahead, and if I find it, okay. I'll jump in. So Connor's going to look, and if he if he finds it, then you can join us. But in the meantime, this is the prayer. May all beings everywhere, plagued by sufferings of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by virtue of my merits. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are warm with toil be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvests. May all medicines be effective and wholesome prayers bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their ailments. Whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other for as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain. Until then, may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. Okay, now I just have one last thing. I know I'm talking so much, but this morning when I found out I had to give a talk, like all of a sudden, I, I, I'm like, what can I share with everybody? Because I was feeling a little scared. <laughs> and so, um, so there's so many books there, but I thought this was kind of telling. This is the book that I came up with. Maybe you guys can't see it, but it's called The Wisdom of No Escape. <laughs> and I have to laugh at myself because I make a big deal out of myself. If anyone, everyone who knows me knows this is the case. So um, 
I liked this. I just opened it up to taking a bigger perspective and I won't read it all because I, I wanna hear from you, but it says this, and it's by Pima Chodron who shares, uh, Lama Jimpa had a teacher called Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche is one of his teachers. And uh, Pima Chodron has this very same teacher and she's written many books. So it goes this way. This morning when I came to meditation, I was hungry and tired and I was also happy when we took the morning walk, I felt even happier, and I realized it had to do with something that happens to us when we practice. We find that we have a bigger perspective on our lives. This feels almost like a blessing or a gift. In many traditions, including Tibetan Buddhism, the circle is a powerful symbol for the sacredness of all things. Throughout these traditions, there are rituals in which the image of the circle is used like this. By drawing a circle around yourself and standing in the middle of it, you realize that you are always at the center of the universe and the circle that surrounds you shows you that you're always in the sacred space. So I just love that because of our, our uh, creating a mandala here at Doni Darge with everybody here and everybody here is important. And that's, uh, and everybody here uh, deserves to be treated with complete respect. And everybody here needs to be listened to. Sometimes we just will, maybe uh, have to wait a moment because of time constraints, but everybody's concerns will be considered. And sometimes things don't go the way we wish, but then we at least are heard and that's so important. So that is my talk. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, if anybody here has a comment or uh, has questions about next week when Lama Jimpa's here, I want everybody here to please return because it will be um, way beyond what I've talked about today. And he will help us uh, create a sacred mandala that is inclusive to our whole community. So um, that's the, that concludes my words. Until, uh, well, actually, um, sometimes I, I must admit, I get a little confused about the order of things. So I do want to do some announcements. But before that, I wondered if people would like to share comment or question. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, could, could you help me, Jules, with that? So uh, Mike Kano is a Sangha member here and he has a question. I was wondering if you could say a little bit about Jada Rinpoche and oh. what it means, uh, Heart Lineage Teacher. Oh, well, thank, thank you, Mike. Uh, <laughs> Yes, so that's a big question. Uh, I'm glad we have a microphone so you could hear his question. So Jada Rinpoche, when we say a heart uh, lineage teacher, that means that it goes from teacher to teacher to teacher. It's unbroken and to us. So when we hear somebody orally, especially if they are present and are in person and we're having, and we hear their teachings in person, then that's going from their heart to where our mind is to our heart. So that's my understanding of heart lineage teacher. So Jada Rinpoche is going, is uh, Lama Jimpa's heart lineage teacher and Lama Jimpa, our, our teacher and so on. So, you know, I actually feel like there's more to say about that topic, but I don't feel qualified. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to add some words to what I've just said or somebody here? Well, it looks like at least I haven't, even if I haven't said a lot, at least I haven't messed up. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank, yeah, you, thank you, Ellen. It's oh, Ellen. Ellen. Oh, good, okay. Can you hear me? I, I don't have anything to add to that, but I think in a way he's also an art. Can you hear me? Hey, Ellen, hang on. Yeah. So thank you for your patience, wait, 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 everyone. Stop, stop. No, no, Ellen's trying to talk. I don't know what they got next. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Ellen, try again. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything to add to what you said, Patty, but I think in some fashion, and maybe Susan or you know better than I, he's the, sort of the abbot of our temple too. Oh, it? that's true. And I, I don't know the, the exact history on that. Again, some of you might know better, but I think in, in, at some point he sort of adopted us and he's done a lot of blessings and so forth at our temple. So he's a very special teacher to us all. And a number of us have gotten to 
take teachings from him before. So um, I don't know strictly what the definition heart lineage means, but certainly for me, he's a very special teacher and he's considered a master in some or all of these uh, topical areas that he's going to offer to us when he comes. So we're very lucky, I think, very lucky. That's so true. Yeah, and I think we could also uh, mention that he has been um, the teacher and friend and long, long, long time acquaintance of our um, teacher Geshe Damcho, mm -hmm. as well as um, Basan, mm -hmm. um, who you know would literally give his life for Jado Rinpoche. So they have been acquainted and attached. Um, you know, involved with and and part of his his, um, his part of his heart for I don't know how many years. I mean, ever since Basan was a child, so it's probably been thirty years or more. Um, so there's a very very close connection to our temple um, through Lama Jimpa, but also through Geshe Damcho and through Basan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Ellen. I'm so glad you both contributed because uh, that I think both of what, what Susan said and what Ellen said are, you know, especially like what Ellen, what Susan said about how uh, Basan would give his life for Jada Rinpoche. That says so much, doesn't it? And uh, he, uh, you know, he's a very uh, sought after teacher because of the reasons that um, Ellen and Susan mentioned and so the fact that he's coming here is just so incredible and it says a lot about our teacher too Lama Chimpa. we've had every abbot from Sergei uh, monastery come here <laughs> you know so that's really incredible anyway um hey, Patty it's Ellen again I was just going to add too that it seemed like when I've been practicing it at, at Lions or at least the last decade or so every year or two Jada Rinpoche would come around you know, and I kind of just took it for granted that we were going to have these masters come around and, and either teach us or be in the area and you could go get teachings from them. And then once COVID hit, you know, I'm glad he didn't travel, but it just, it makes you really realize how lucky we are to have some of these teachers start to come back mm -hmm. because we just didn't get it. You know, they stayed in Asia, wherever they probably, wherever they had landed at the beginning of the whole thing. So I, I hope he can travel safe, but I'm feeling just especially grateful that he's coming. Yeah. So uh, is, are there any uh, any questions here or comments? Oh, yes, Jules. My question isn't about um, Jado Rinpoche. It's more about the topic of Bodhicitta. Oh, and yes. I feel really lucky because last week you did that beautiful talk on Bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. We you. get a continuation this week, but um, it's a really special prayer that you picked to share with us. Um, so there's a part where it says, may the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks and skipping down ahead, it says. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting others. And it just reminded me of um, last week when you were saying that it starts and ends with bodhicitta. Oh, mm -hmm. And that bodhicitta, you know, I've seen teachers and others be able to say something um, cutting, but it comes with such love mm -hmm. and wakefulness and you know others can appear to be kind but the core of it can be so selfish and that that last line right there mm -hmm. it just it's such a wonderful reminder that it just it really does start and end with bodhicitta yeah. and for some reason it feels like when people have that at their core everything somehow just falls into place and it's just it's just right and it's it's just really beautiful and i wanted to thank you for continuing that beautiful talk <laughs> to think llama <laughs> yeah yeah we do thank you yeah you know um so llama has been saying lately but maybe he's, he's always saying this but in different ways but he he says bodhisattvas look around how's it going bodhisattvas look what, what is it bodhisattvas look around for things to do <laughs> so um that means we come out of our caves and look around for things to do people to help this is our job here. So um, actually, everybody showing up online today is, is doing that, and everybody in person is doing that. And, um, you know, I, so unless there, I just want to make sure I don't 
move too quick because I think I do because I get shy that there are because there are <laughs> like I'm not sure how my talks coming across and I just really do care that it comes across in a way that's beneficial like I think everybody that gives one has that same wish um so uh, there aren't are there any more comments or questions before I, I have some announcements actually um yeah it looks like uh Andrew has a comment okay. just go ahead and uh, unmute yourself Andrew hi everybody uh, thanks for the uh, impromptu talk, Patty. It was one of your best. <coughs> Let me the script wow. out. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was from your heart, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to share just a, what I think, I, one of the things I realized listening to your talk uh, with regard to Bodhicitta, um, just a work situation that I'll, I'll share briefly. Um, so, as many of you know, I work um, with medical residents in, in a residency program. And uh, every twice a year, I'm responsible for putting together a coordinating retreat for them to kind of help them to um, relax and, and kind of um, de-stress, if you will. And so um, I just really felt burnt out this year and not into it at all. And um, I don't know why I volunteered. I, Ellen did it one year. It was wonderful. She did a, a talk for us. Um, I, I just decided I would do it this year and, and everybody wanted the theme to be wellness and resilience. And um, I just was resenting it. And as, as it was getting closer, it's coming up on Wednesday. I just kept like, oh, I really don't want to do this. And then I realized what a, an opportunity to benefit these people who are putting themselves uh, in harm's way and, and so much stress on a daily basis to, to help people. And um, so uh, I spent most of yesterday putting together a, um, what I call well a palooza. And it's um, where they're, they're gonna have all these various wellness stations that they have to, not have to, but that they can go to. and. Um, kind of learn about various aspects of wellness while, while doing them and having fun. And what I thought was going to be miserable because I had no energy um, all day yesterday, I gave up my Saturday and I have so much energy and I spent the day in the park doing reconnaissance and being in nature and it was just wonderful. So uh, that benefiting others gave me so much energy. And uh, so I just thought I'd share that. That felt like bodhicitta to me. Yeah, that's, that sounds like it, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, gosh, Andrew, now, I, now I'm having a good day. <laughs> I am. So I've, um, okay. I guess I, I can't see chat, so I, forgive me if I'm moving. Yeah. Is there anyone else coming? Yeah, there is. Uh, Autumn seems to have a comment, and okay. Trugo has a nice comment for you. That she, she loves you and so glad that she came. So we're glad that you came also. Hi, Patty. Oh, hi, can you hear me? I hear you, okay. Autumn. Yeah, thank you. thank you for your talk. I really, uh, Lama's very sneaky, isn't he? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm either going to get white hair or enlightened. <laughs> or, both. or both. Yeah, so he knows you have a voice, a beautiful voice, and, and he's getting you to use it, and I think that's wonderful. But the one that, um, the part of your talk that really struck me was what you said about the lady at Starbucks. You know, I mean, that's that's what sticks with me is that you recognize the kindness of someone serving your coffee at Starbucks. And can you imagine a world where people are so open to seeing other people fully and completely when they're um, acting in service and what that does to someone when they're recognized for doing that? It just like propels us all forward in a good direction. Um, I think a lot of times we're, we're looking for what people are doing wrong, right? The customer is always right and, and the things that happen that, um, that we don't like, and that's like often where we're stuck. But if we open our eyes to recognizing the good in other people, then that just like multiplies itself. So oh, true. beautiful reminder. Thank you. Because yeah, the bodhisattvas are not just us at the temple. Oh, that's for sure. We're so small. Yeah, Look, yeah it's a big world out there. Yeah. It can so be thanks. all sorts of different faith backgrounds and 
no faith at all, but just having that quality. We recognize it when we come across it. I, you know, so. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I have these few announcements, but they're probably incomplete. So, um, you know, then I count on you guys to help me <laughs> if there's something you know that I haven't included. Let's see here. You know, Connor helped me a little bit with these. He added an important one. Let's see what I did with it. Thank you for your patience. So these announcements are just, we do it every time regarding what's coming up. And, oh gosh, oh, here we go. Nope, I don't have them. So I'm gonna have to just wing it. So Connor, can, I hope you'll help me what I forget. So, so Monday, uh, you know, next week is a special week because we have this holiday on the 27th called Lava Duchin. And um, this is a very uh, sacred holiday for us. It's one of the four great holidays in our tradition. And um, it's a story about when the Buddha went to heaven to help his mother. And then he returned because uh, she was trapped in this heaven called the 33rd heaven. But, um, and then I don't, I think that might make it uh, not understandable to people who aren't familiar with the story. But the main thing is, is he, that he wanted to repay his mother's kindness. I think that's the most important thing to express right now. He wanted to repay his mother's kindness. And then he decided uh, while in heaven that he needed, when he met one of his students and that student um, implored him uh, to return to earth to teach more. And our teacher's currently on retreat. So he, I think he kind of wanted us to think about how that is for us as students of Lama Jimpa, that he's away right now and we want him to return to teach us and what that means for us personally, each one of us. So that's how I took it anyway. So on Wednesday, if you, um, if you have, but I hopefully you'll do whatever practice you normally do, whether it's walking meditation or meditation in your home or, or special prayers that you might do as a personal practice. And, and then how you treat people every day with kindness will be, all be multiplied times I've heard 10 million. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's just a wonderful thought that whatever we do on the 27th is multiplied. And we have this special uh, practice at six o'clock at uh, Lions Road Dharma Center and um, Kathy Montes will lead us in a special prayer, a special prayer meditation, the King of Prayers. And um, so I, if you can come to that, that'd be wonderful. And then the other thing is there's gonna be the volunteer meeting that wasn't held this Sunday will be next Sunday. And your presence is so important and appreciated because um, you'll be able to hear what's going on instead of secondhand. Because sometimes when we hear things secondhand, we don't get the full gist of it. It's better if we're there. And, um, and let's see, what was it? Was there any other announcements, Connor? Yeah. Um, so we're looking for some sponsors for the, uh, Kalachakra cards and prayer books. Um, so that goes along with the initiation that'll happen, um, when Jada Rinpoche is here. Um, th there's actually a, a fairly elaborate book that was done 10 years ago when it was a, a Jenong for the, um, Guru Yoga for Kalachakra. So hopefully we can do something similar to that, I guess. Um, but it, you know, it takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, investment to do that. Um, you know, sponsors for Jada Rinpoche's whole trip, that, I mean, that that's a lot, um, a lot of investment and time and effort for that. Uh, I think more of that will go on, more explanation for that will go on next week when Lama is here. Um, Monday night, Amitayas practice is going on, so please, I think, a lot of people in the room is, have taken that um, empowerment and online from what I can see. So um, please continue to do that practice. Um, and then uh, this is a request that I have and Geshe Damsho has. Um, if you have um, authorization to do protector practice, please stick around after uh, closing prayers. Uh, Geshe Damsho would like to do protector practice with us this Tuesday but we need to discuss what time. He's fairly opened, um, but I need the group to sort of, you know, work together to determine a time. So please, if you do that practice, 
stick around for a few minutes so that we can talk about the time. And that's all that I think is on the list, Patty. Oh, thank you so much, Connor. Gosh, did I miss a lot of important stuff that thankfully we have others. <laughs> so um, thank, thank you all for coming. You know, I, I, I don't know. I think you guys are supporting Oh, yourself. wait, wait. We've yes. got one other. Yes. We have a lot of mantras to still roll. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Um, here's the good news is that the mantras will be put into the statue, but the statue is not going to be consecrated next weekend. But we're going to put them in, I don't know when, uh, but Geshe Dantra said to, that he wants Jadar Rinpoche to be part of the consecration. So we have more time, but we still want to get them done because we don't want to try to wait until Thanksgiving weekend to, to rush to do those. Um, I, I don't want to do that. I hope that none of the rest of you want to do that. Um, so hopefully we can get them done this weekend and next weekend. Um, so please come help roll mantras. I think we've made a lot of progress with that. So thank you. Now I'm done. Okay. All right. So that's a, that a lot of announcements. <laughs> so, uh, so now uh, we're going to uh, do our, what we do is a dedication. And um, Connor will screen save it, share it. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenvizig, Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of the stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Mars. Sankarpa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Sangdrakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you for, for coming, everyone. Thank you, Patty. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Not on a blustery day says a whole lot. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Thanks, Connor, too. To you and bye, the bye, Sasha's friend. <laughs> bye, Andy. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Hey, Michelle. Hi, Mike. Thanks for coming, Michelle. That's so nice of you to come with Mike. Yeah, it always makes me happy to see you. Oh. Hey. I'll see if I can get one more here. Oh. Uh, one day or two, maybe work on this. You want me to work on it? Yeah. Oh. Please. Oh, so yeah. Now, so yeah, we have extra. Would you like a copy of it, Michelle? Oh, no, it's going to be uh, I'm so glad Tuesday. You shared that. That oh, means a lot to me. Yeah. I don't know when. Do you, oh, yeah. Do you, do you, do you know what? So am well, I. I, I think it's obvious. <laughs> but it doesn't seem to stop him from asking me to do things. <laughs> So this would be called in Lama. Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's just for people with that. Yeah, you know. right now. But that's one of the ones that's going to be done um, when Java Rinpoche is here. So, oh, I don't know why either, but I get it. I understand oh, it, even more though more I don't know why. Do because I look at you. Oh, you're a beautiful person. So it looks like there's some people stayed you're online doing. for a protector practice that we're going to yeah. make a time, I guess. Uh, so I see Marie and Dana so and Karen and, your, and Susan and, uh, and Matthew and, and I think Ellen. I, I don't were. see Ellen, but but anyway, um, can can you guys hear me? Could uh, maybe I guess we're going to make a time for Tuesday. I I have to work yeah. myself, so it has yes. to be later yeah. for me, but not too late because I know uh, people don't like to be out in the dark and stuff. Okay. Okay. Hey, Patty. Um, can you hear us? Oh, I can hear. Oh, now I can, Dana. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, I know, I know some of us work, so. Uh, Are um, we going to be doing an online practice? 
protector practice? I, I'm gonna ask, I'm not sure. I'm gonna let Connor leave because I don't know. So um, Gershla was uh, willing to do online both. I mean, we have to do it in the Gompa anyways. So we can set it up so that it's somewhat online. It's not gonna be perfect, but um, we can make that happen both online and in person. Okay. Um, Gesha seemed to be a little bit more uh, interested in morning or afternoon, which I know is ridiculously difficult for almost wow. everyone. So um, at first he said 5.30, which I think is pretty difficult for people to get to. Um, you know, my schedule was really at his pleasure at this point. So spat out some times and whatever seems to work for most people will can give to him. So 5.30 in the morning or afternoon? Afternoon. That was his first suggestion. Oh. I could do that. Sorry. Uh, Jules says 6.30. Yeah, sorry. I have a class until like 6.00, 6.05, so I can just like run over directly after at 6. I can make it by 6.30. Maybe. Uh, what about Connor? If you tell him uh, 5.30 and then say, but if 6.30 would help some of us. Would you do that? I think we just need to tell them what time works for, for everyone. All right. So um, does okay. 630 work for the vast majority of people? Marie, does that work for you? Marie says 530. Mm -hmm. Heather says five. I can do 530 or 630, either one. Yeah, me too. Okay. Um, does six, can we, I mean, what about six? Yeah. Six would be great, actually. Even better than 6.30. Well, Jules, Jules can't make it till 6.30, so seems... All right, six thirty. So uh, yes, so if he can't do six thirty, you could say six because Jules said she could leave early potentially. Oh, I see. That sound good? Hey, Connor, are you, Connor, are you going to show if we are online at that time? Are you going to show the text that you use because I have an outdated text? Um, let me show you the text that is on here. Or if someone could send me the updated version, so because mine is an older version from FPMT. Or maybe I, I can go to FPMT and get the, is that I, where you got it? Karen, I think that's the version. I've never had any more than one version ever. Well, lately when I've seen people doing it, they have a newer version from, and it may be from FPMT that I can just download. I don't know. Yeah, that's where I got mine. It was from FPMT download. Recently so, or years ago, and it hasn't changed. Oh, we'll see. Two thousand nine. I was doing it way back before that. So, yeah, this I was an FPMT that. download. Okay, I'll download the most recent one they have. Okay, I I can also try to just email you this. Oh, that'd be great too. Okay, that's even easier. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah. Here, let me. I'm gonna. Can you shoot it to me too, Connor? Yes. I I'm have a printed copy, you. but not the online one. Okay, let me do that right now. So give me a second. I'm going to sort of ignore you guys for a moment. Is this something that we're doing for um, just for the next couple of weeks before Jada Rinpoche comes, or is this something that's gonna be a long-term practice? So this would be a one-off at this point, um, mostly because schedules get really tough with um, Geshe Dantra. He's going to DC for a bit, and then he's going to be um, in the Bay Area for a while, on and off. Okay, so, so is this for the next six weeks or so? No, this is just for this coming Tuesday. That's it. Just oh, one oh. Tuesday, not occurring. Yeah. Okay. Then, then we he leads us to practice, and then uh, we do it on our own. 
Is that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I tend to do this practice on my own. Um, yeah. Sometimes we do it together. Oh, so it'd be good to, I, I would need a copy of it too, if, in case you're just okay. doing it. All right. Okay, um, so 6.30 on Tuesday and I will send, does anyone else want it? Okay. Maybe just send to everybody, Connor. Okay, uh, in that case, can anyone else who wants it uh, raise their hand at the moment? <laughs> Seriously, Connor, I'll raise my hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we're all raising our hands. <laughs> I feel like I'm at work on Monday. I don't want to raise my hand. <laughs> I don't know how to raise my hand, but I'm raising my hand. Oh, I think I found it. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. And what was the time again? Six, six thirty? Yes. Six thirty? <laughs> thirty. Okay. <laughs> so wait, we decided on six thirty. Yeah. Okay. All right. Really? Sorry, you guys all just got a blank email. You're gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna do this from my computer because my phone is not cooperating at the moment. Um, and that'll happen in a few minutes. <laughs> No problem. All right. Is there anything, is there anything else we need, Connor? I mean, are we I good? don't think there's anything else we so need we now. Say, we can say uh, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna send the link. Maybe maybe just sending sending the link with the text at the same time. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, we'll let you. We'll give you some time, Connor. You don't have to do it right now. We'll make here, that man. happen. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go laugh for a while, so yeah. um, let's, let's go uh, do something else for a little bit. <laughs> all, right. all right, so so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you all. Appreciate it. Hey, okay. bye everybody. Yeah, see you Tuesday. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.